Hi, my name is Benny Barhe. I'm a senior solutions architect here with the Microsoft Platform Team. Uh, today I'll be showing you how to run SQL Server 2017 on the Amazon EC2 Linux 2.0 AMI. Let's get this started. So SQL Server is currently supported on Red Hat Enterprise Server, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, and Ubuntu. The core database engine for SQL Server is the same on Linux as it is on Windows. Some of the non-supported features today are transactional replication, database mirroring, and reporting services. For a full list, please visit the URL mentioned in this slide. When we look at cost at a glance, you can see that running Linux versus Windows saves you over a dollar per hour when running SQL Server on a different platform. If the limited features work for you today, it would be cost effective to run SQL Server on Linux. Here are some helpful resources that you can use to get used to or run your SQL Server workload on the new Amazon Linux 2.0 AMI. You could use the connecting to your Linux instance from Windows using PuTTY. That link is very helpful when you don't know how to connect to your Linux host or instance using your Windows AMI. Also, we have a blog how to configure SQL Server 2017 on Amazon Linux 2 and Ubuntu AMIs. Another helpful resource are the release notes for the SQL Server 2017 on Linux website that Microsoft Today keeps up to date on a daily basis. So let's get started with our demo. To continue, please connect your PuTTY window to your Amazon Linux 2.0 AMI. This demo leverages the Amazon Linux 2.0 AMI, which comes with SQL Server 2017 installed or baked into your instance. What's assumed of you is that you've already built out your VPC and subnet for the instance to live in. Once connected, elevate your user session running sudo su. Okay, so this will create a connection using the root account or admin account local to the system, as you can see by what I've highlighted on the new line. To get a full list of volumes on the instance, execute lsblk. These are the volumes for the specific instance. Because the AMI includes SQL Server 2017, you'll need to reset the SA password for the SQL Server instance. To do so, you'll first need to stop the SQL Server instance by executing sudo systemctl stop mssql server. That will stop your service. Soon after, run the following command to change the password. The mssql-conf file is what you use to configure your SQL Server instance. This is different from Windows because you have the option to use SQL Server Configuration Manager to change the password versus having to do it programmatically like we're doing right now. Enter the SA password of your choice, then confirm that password once prompted. Once that is complete, let's go ahead and start the SQL Server service so we can continue with the configuration. Now let's go ahead and create a directory and change the default directory for the specific SQL Server instance. We first have to format the volume we select and use the ext4 file system using the following command. You can select your specific volume or a device. In this case, we're going to use the xvdb volume for this example.
Now that we've set up the file system, it is ready for us to create a directory within that specific volume. To create a directory, execute sudo mkdir forward slash SQL Server data. SQL Server data will be the directory we create for this specific example, which we will mount soon after. Now that we have a directory created, we have to mount it to the specific volume. To do this, execute the mount command, including the directory you want to commit to this specific volume. This example uses forge slash SQL Server data for the directory. And we'll be using the XVDB volume to mount this directory onto. So after mounting the directory, we have to grant permissions onto that directory for the SQL Server service. This ensures that the service can write to that directory. So here we're running sudo chown, the name of the service, and the directory that we want the permission to be applied to. We'll do the same thing, but this time we'll use chgroup, or grp, the service name, and a specific directory we want that permission onto. So the file location.default data dir and file location.default log dir settings set the location for the SQL Server data and log files. For this specific demo, we'll set the default data directory using the directory we just created, forward slash SQL Server data. To do this, you use the following command. You use the mssql-conf file to set the file location .default data directory for the SQL Server data mount point that we just created. What we've just done is set the default data directory for all the SQL Server data files. After doing this, the SQL Server engine will need to be restarted. To do this, run the following restart command. Now that the service is restarted, let's confirm the mount point exists by running lsblk. This will list your mount points and your drives for this specific instance. As you can see here, we do have a mount point available and it has 200 gigabytes allocated to it. Now, if you want to, you can also follow the same steps to set the default SQL Server log directory, backup directory, or any other configurable settings using the mssql conf file. Make sure that your mount point persists through a system reboot. Add an entry for the device in the fstab file. This file contains volumes and other information for the system when needing to persist mount points or configurations through a reboot. To ensure the SQL Server data mount point persists through a reboot, we first need the universal unique identifier for that specific volume. To do so, run the following command. When you run the command, be sure to use the specific device that you've mounted your directory onto. This specific example uses the XVDB specific volume that we'll need to get the UUID or the unique identifier for the FSTAB file. As you can see here, the UUID is visible. Copy that to your clipboard so you have it saved for later use. Once you've done that, you can then open the FSTAB file 
and add an entry to it. So let's go ahead and open it by running nano forward slash etc forward slash fs tab. This will open up the file so we can enter a line item at the top of that file. So while it's open, go to the top of the file and add that entry by simply adding a new line and pasting it to the UUID with the mount point mentioned. So after entering the UUID, enter the format the volume was mounted using. In this case, being EXT4. Followed by the default values for that specific volume. To save this, type Control X and then type Y to confirm the changes. Once you've saved it, you can confirm the change by running cat forward slash etc forward slash fs tab. And see the new entry is present for that fs tab file. And you can see there at the top of that file, the new entry is placed and present. If we ever decided to, we can reboot and see the same mount point available. That is how you add a mount point to an FS tab file so you can avoid an outage every time you reboot the server. <laughs> For one last confirmation, connect to the SQL Server instance using the SA password you set at the beginning of this demo. Once you opened up SQL Server Management Studio, Go to the Server Instance Properties window, click on the Database Settings, and view what directory is set for the data location. As you can see in this specific example, the log directory was already set, and we went ahead and set the data directory soon after. If you want to do the same, you could do the same for the backup directory to any directory you like on that specific server. So in this video, you've just learned how to run SQL Server on Amazon Linux 2.0. I hope that this was very helpful, and thank you for watching. Thank you.